Hello, my relatives. Thank you so much for all of you coming out tonight. It is awesome to see all of you, and I'm so grateful to be here with you. And, and it is funny because my, my niece is also one of my board members at Honor the Earth along with Jennifer Kreisberg. So give a hand one more time to Kim Smith and Jennifer. So I just want to say a couple things. I'm very grateful to be here. I come from a place that is different than this. I come from northern Minnesota, where the headwaters of both the Mississippi and the Red River comes from my territory, from my community. I come from a community that is trying to protect a fifth of the world's water. That is the water of the Great Lakes. I come from some people who last year in 2016, defeated a pipeline. We defeated a pipeline <laughs> that the Enbridge Company wanted to bring to our territory of fracked oil, and we fought them for four years. We fought them, we went, we had ceremonies, we rode our horses, we went through the regulatory process of the white man, we went to the court of the white man, and one day the company, Enbridge, Enbridge is the largest pipeline company in North America, one day Enbridge said they were no longer going to continue their project. You know, they never say we were wrong. Did you ever notice that? They never say we're sorry. Did you ever hear them say we're sorry? No, they don't even know how to say we're sorry. It's like that Trump guy is like about four years old or something. Like no ability to say he's sorry, right? It's just one of those things you gotta work out in that patriarchy shit. Like, you gotta learn to say you're sorry when you're about four or five and mean it, actually. But anyway, they didn't say they're sorry, but what they did then is that company because the predator, you know, I used to call this the predator economy. And now I'm, I, I decide to call it the Windigo economy. The Windigo economy. Did you guys ever hear of the Windigo? Yeah. So in our territory is a cannibal, a horrible cannibal that lives between different worlds and comes at different times to our villages for many years off and on. But there were always people who were strong and they defeated the cannibal. They defeated the cannibal, they defeated the Windigo. But what we are facing now is pretty much that. If you look out there around the world, which if you look out there, you see the greed of these corporations is coming and trying to take more and more of our lives, more and more of our food, more and more of our water, more of our mountains, and more of everything that means anything to us and is how we live. But what I know is that corporations and those guys, they fight a long time, but their power is really about money. Their power is about trying to make people fearful. And their power is about trying to make people keep drinking the Kool-Aid that they've been passing out. And what I'm saying to all of you is what y'all know. It's like time to free your minds of that stuff. Time to move on. In our teachings as Anishinaabeg people, this is called the time of the seventh fire. And in that time of the seventh fire, it is said that we as Anishinaabeg people, long time ago our prophets, they said to us that we would be people that would be in this time that would be faced with a choice between two paths. And one path they said would be well-worn but scorched. And the other path they said would not be well-worn and it would be green. And it was said by our prophets so long ago that we as Anishinaabeg people would have to make a choice upon which path to embark. Now all of us can see what that scorched path is. All of us know that our life cannot continue on that scorched path. And we are the people that have this opportunity to do something great. It's a spiritual moment. It's a spiritual moment for us. We have an opportunity to keep them from blowing off the top of more mountains. We have an opportunity to keep them from fracking and busting up the bedrock of Mother Earth. We are the people who have the opportunity to keep them from genetically engineering the food supply. We are the people that have the opportunity to keep them from combusting the planet to oblivion them being the Windigo economy, them being those who take more than they need and do not leave things for life. That's a really great spiritual opportunity to have. And we're the ones that are in that moment. And so as I look across this continent, you know, I'm grateful to be here. I come from a place where we defeated the black snake, we defeated a pipeline. But yet at the same time, that pipeline was to the west of us and that company went west. And that company was brutal in that battle uh, Dakota Territory, and Dakota Access Pipeline Project. And I want to make a shout out and gratitude to the water protectors who are there at Stanley Rock. Thank you. Thank you all for your hard work. Thank you.
thank y'all for your hard work. Meeting with Chody. And we learned a lot up there. We learned a lot about what they want to do to civil society in this country. Where they want to eliminate the rules of engagement and shoot at us and tear gas us and shoot rubber bullets at us and mace us. And then criminalize us. We learned that there's 840 people charged out of Standing Rock. 840 people charged. But what I know is, is that you got to keep at it. And what I know is that this last month, 32 of those cases were dismissed. And what I know is that I'm asking all of you, if you've got water protectors in your family, go back to North Dakota with them. Because in order to change the deep north, you got to be present. you got to show them your face and say, we are watching you, North Dakota. This is not, this is not Selma. This is a new time. This is a time when our people need to be protected and the rights of corporations can't supersede the rights of individuals and the rights of Mother Earth. So go back with them, but stay here and fight our fight. So tonight, this is a benefit and a lot of these proceeds are gonna to go to people on the front lines. People on the front lines in Chiapas, protecting their land and water and future generations and liberation schools. The students of this event tonight are gonna to go to people that are helping stop uranium mining in the sacred Grand Canyon. And proceeds from tonight are going to go to support Native people and protecting the buffalo herds of the North Country. <laughs> this moment is an important moment for all of us. And as we all stand here, what I know is that if you want to support Indigenous people and all work together, we could do this. Because 20% of the world's land is the territory of Indigenous people. And that's where the remaining biodiversity is, the greatest water, the sacred sites, and the greatest medicines. And now will be our time to protect that. So as we stand here and work, look forward. I want to say, fight the bad guys, but look where we're going. What does that green path look like? Make that solar energy. Make those gardens. Grow your food. Enlighten your people. Keep your spirits high. And know that we're the ancestors that we want our descendants to be proud of. This is our moment. And tonight when I come in here, I noticed it's the beginning of the moon. It's a new moon in our territory. And so in that new moon, let us plant our seeds of resistance. Let us plant our seeds of hope. Let us find our courage. Let us love each other, take care of each other. Let us be the water protectors who defeat the Wendigo. Let us be the people who honor our Mother Earth. Thank you all so much for coming out tonight.